Hi there, welcome to the second part of our discussion on domestic violence and resiliency. So in the last video, we talked a lot about domestic violence and some of the effects that can happen if someone grows up in an environment with domestic violence or is exposed to domestic violence. So that can be kind of a disheartening section. Um, it can be difficult to talk about and kind of rough to look at some of those statistics and some of those effects. But thankfully, that's not the end of the story. Thankfully, we know that resiliency is a thing that can happen, and that's kind of what we're going to be focusing on in this second part. So in this section, it is, we really want to encourage personal reflection to help this feel relevant to your own life. So we will ask you throughout this video to pause the video and kind of reflect in a way that works well for you on what these ideas mean to you personally and kind of how they fit into your own life. So whether that means pausing and writing things down or just sitting and reflecting, or if you're watching this video with someone, you can pause and discuss that with that person if that's a good option for you. Whatever works well for you, um, we really encourage you to participate in that way. So let's talk a little bit about resiliency. We know that 54%, over half of children exposed to domestic violence do remain resilient to that psychological damage that can happen. So what is resilience? How do we become more resilient? What do we mean when we say resilient or resiliency? So take just a few minutes, um, again, like we warned you would happen, um, pause the video and reflect on a way that works well for you um, on some of these questions. Think about what resilience is and how people around us or we ourselves can become more resilient. So resiliency is the power or ability to return to health or to recover from stress, adversity, trauma, that type of thing. So if you watched the video about Will Gay, was he resilient? And how do you know whether or not he was resilient? How did he become more resilient? Did he have anything or any people who helped him out in that process? How do we build resiliency in our own brains? Or how can we help others to build resiliency? So Go ahead and think about these questions. Also, pause the video to watch this linked video and learn a little bit more about building resiliency. So take some notes on some of the types of things that you see and that you notice that help build that resiliency. Um, and think about how that applies to the story we saw about Will. Okay, so by now you should have gone and watched that video about resiliency. So what were some things that you learned? When negative experiences lessen or end, and when we have safe and supportive people around us and other positive supports, we can start building that resiliency in our lives. If we have someone who maybe is in need of a little bit of help building resiliency, we can do what we can to keep those negative experiences at bay, kind of keep them um, lessening or end them, and be the, one of those safe and supportive people for that person to help them build that resiliency as well. Here are a few more tips for building resiliency. Working on acceptance and being able to adapt to change. Learning how to identify and manage our own stress. Identify things that might kind of trigger our stress and be able to know what kinds of things, know ourselves and know what kinds of things can help to relieve that or avoid that. Practicing compassion and empathy, regulating our own emotions, being aware of ourselves and knowing ourselves and what types of things are going to be more difficult for us, what types of things might be more sensitive for us, and how we can kind of regulate that and sort of keep that in a, in a balance. Identifying support systems in our lives and making positive relationships. So if we have people who are supportive and positive in our lives, figuring out who those people are and reaching out to them and connecting with them. If we don't have people like that in our lives, making those connections. So whether that's going to school resources or work resources or some other type of community resource, a religious group, 
or a, a group of people who have maybe similar hobbies or similar values, finding those types of people who can be that support system for us is going to be very, very helpful, especially if we don't already have those support systems, making sure that we get those connections made. Don't try to do it alone. We don't have to go through this whole process of building resiliency and getting over things on our own, but know that it's okay to not feel like we have to tell everyone about everything about our lives. It's okay to keep some things to ourselves, but be able to reach out and connect with other people. Practicing self, self care and healthy coping skills is also super helpful. Knowing ourselves, knowing what kinds of things are helping us to take care of our own selves, as well as focusing on our strengths and making attainable goals, making goals that we can achieve and knowing what types of things that we are good at. So how are these things on the list for you? How do you do them? Which types of things did we see Will in the video doing? Is there anything on this list that maybe is naturally easier for you? Is there anything that you notice and think, oh, I already do that naturally? Is there anything on this list that you might have to work harder at that might be more difficult? Go ahead and pause the video again. Write down some of these questions and reflect or journal about them for a little bit. Um, maybe notice what types of things are more difficult, what types of things are easier, what types of things you already do, what types of things you might want to do more. So just take a few minutes and reflect on that. We've got a couple more questions to ask. So as we go through these questions, I encourage you to again, continue to pause the video after each question and spend a little bit of time reflecting on these questions um, or discussing or answering them in some way that works well for you. What are some healthy habits that you can practice? What are healthy coping skills that you can use when you're feeling stressed? What are things that work well for you? What are things that have worked for you in the past? Practicing those healthy habits and healthy, healthy coping skills can help us move away from some of the maybe more harmful effects that we talked about earlier. Who is your support system? Who can you talk to about difficult topics? So kind of like we mentioned earlier, if you don't have that support system or if you're not sure, where can you look for one? Is there anyone in your life that maybe you have a loose acquaintance with that you would like to connect with more? Is there a community or a group or a local resource that you can access that would help you find those support systems? What can you do to care for yourself or to take a mental break? Never feel bad for taking a break or taking care of yourself. Self-care isn't selfish and self-care looks different for different people. So what does it look like for you to take care of yourself or take a little break or step away? What are your strengths? What can you do to build your strengths? Knowing yourself and your own strengths can be a really helpful tool for learning how you personally build resiliency. So what are, what are you good at? Do you want to do that more? Do you want to expand that? What are some things that you value about your own self? So hopefully you had to take a little bit of time to think about those questions, answer them, reflect on them. Those can be really helpful questions for us to consider as we're working on building resiliency in our own lives. So what can you do? If you or someone you know might be struggling to build resiliency, what can we do about that? Remember that we at Safe Passage are here for you. So if you wanna learn more information or get connected with other community resources, we're happy to do that. You can reach us at that phone number up there on the top of the screen, 208-664-9303. That phone number is available 24 seven. We can also talk to other people that we trust, like parents, teachers, friends, other people in our lives that we trust and who are safe for us. Again, identifying those positive and safe support systems and supportive communities. If something is going on that is putting us in danger or that is a crime, we can always report to law enforcement or a school resource officer. Obviously, if we're in very immediate danger, calling 911, um, but we can also report to law enforcement or student resource officers 
as well. Getting connected to counseling services can also be incredibly helpful going through some of these feelings and some of these dynamics with a professional and taking care of ourselves and practicing those healthy coping skills. So just as a reminder, here's some of our contact information. So we're here for you. We are more than happy to help get you connected with resources that can help lessen those negative experiences and help build up those positive supports so that we can start building resiliency in situations like this. So just as a reminder, that phone number is available 24-7, 208-664-9303. That's a really good way to get in contact with us. Um, if the issue, especially if the issue is time sensitive, that phone number is available at any time. Our website is also a place where we can go and read more about who we are and what we do, safepassageid.org. Students can get a hold of us at our student-specific email for middle school, high school, and college-age students at studentsafety at safepassageid.org. And also we can be reached via Instagram. So we can be, we can respond to messages and you can also just follow our account as well. Our Instagram and our email are maybe not the best options if the issue is very time sensitive because we can't always guarantee that we'll be able to answer those messages immediately. We do our best to answer as soon as we can, but if the issue is really time sensitive, the phone number is probably a better bet. We also have a Facebook page. So before you go, this presentation did have a lot of heavy content, so feel free to watch this linked video, this little pep talk. It's very uplifting and very fun. So feel free to click on that and watch that. And thank you so much for listening and participating. Have a wonderful day.